Good morning, everyone. Good Saturday. Thank you for joining me today. I am going to be talking about how to ace your next job interview. So if you are someone who has either been laid off from your job, if you're struggling to find work right now, I am going to be giving you top the top five most common interview questions and answers and how to appropriately approach these questions so that you can ace your next interview and ultimately get hired faster. I know that times are hard right now, so I'm going to do my best to give you as many tips as I can to help you get through this time. And just to give you a little bit of background about myself, I have a background in healthcare as well as HR and recruiting. Um, I did that for about eight to 10 years, and then I decided that, you know what, I can't work for anybody. So I decided to kind of um, join my experiences and start my own um, career development business. So I've been doing this now for about eight years. Um, what I do is I help professionals prepare for and step into a new career. So we do resume writing, LinkedIn profiles, career coaching. Um, we also do job search assistance and things of that nature. So anyway, thank you guys for joining me today. I'm going to get right to it. Um, I'm giving you the top five most common interview questions and answers that are going to help you ace your next interview, both online and in person. I know right now a lot of employers are probably interviewing online because of Corona and everything. So this also applies to um, online interviews. And so also, if you want to know the top companies that are hiring right now, I am going to be giving that list to you at the end of this video. So you will want to stick around for more information on that. All right, guys, so let's get started. So question number one is, tell me about yourself. So this is probably one of the oldest interview questions in the book. It's a question that you have probably come across in 99% of your job interviews in the past, and it's one that you're going to continue coming across as well, pretty much indefinitely. So when answering this question, tell me about yourself, you want to keep your answers in general very brief and very concise. On average, you want your answers to be anywhere between 30 seconds and up to two minutes at the very most. So practicing these questions is going to be very important so that you um, can not only kind of make everything as concise as possible, but make sure to hit all of the high points as well. Um, I would recommend practicing doing these questions in front of a mirror or even recording yourself on a video and um, just kind of perfecting it from there. So anyway, tell me about yourself. So when answering this question, you want to keep this as brief as possible. You also want to keep this answer on topic and related to your um, position that you're applying for. So it must be related to the work that you do position that you're applying for. Um, so when you are telling the interviewer about, um, about yourself, you want to tell them how you got started in your profession. You want to tell them maybe where you went to school, kind of what initiated your interest in that profession or in that industry. Um, and then maybe gloss over a few different jobs that you've had and tell them, you know, what you've liked about those jobs and also where you see yourself heading. So ultimately, this question is more like an elevator pitch. If you were to meet someone in an elevator and they ask you, tell me about yourself or what do you do? What are you going to say to them within about 30 seconds? So you need to be able to wrap up, you know, where you see yourself heading, what your goals are, as well as how your interests align with that position that you're applying for. All right. And so question number two is why did you leave your last job? So when answering this question, there's a few different reasons why people you know, leave their job. One is you're either leaving at free will because you found another job. Uh, two is that maybe you were fired from your job or let go. <clears throat> and then three is that you were laid off. Those are usually the most common reasons why people leave their jobs. So let me kind of run through these with you. When you leave your job at free will, you want to tell them that you left however you left on a positive note. You want to reflect positively on your former employer and tell them that it was a hard decision for you to make. However, you it was the right decision. And if you fired from your job, you want to be as brief as possible in your explanation. Don't badger your previous employers. You know, don't say anything negative about anybody, but take responsibility for what has been done. However, you want to be as short in your explanation as possible while taking responsibility so that, you know, you're still covering um, what happened and owning up to the fact 
that you were fired, but you're not going into too many details to make them wonder or question things any further. And the third one is if you were laid off from your job due to downsizing of, of the economy or downsizing of the company, something like that, I would use that as the backbone when it comes to explaining why you were laid off. Let them know that several other employees were laid off as well. And this will um, ultimately help the employer see this as a um, more positive thing for you. All right, and question number three is, describe a difficult problem you were faced with within your career and what did you do to overcome it? So I'm sure we've all faced this question at some time or another in a job interview. So describe a problem you were faced with in your career and how did you overcome it? What did you do and how did you overcome it? So the employer really wants to hear that you have worked with a team of people to tackle issues and overcome obstacles. That's ultimately what they want to hear. And so this is really a problem solving question that tests your critical thinking skills. OK, so in two ways, your definition of difficulty and also how you handle the situation. These are two things that the employer is looking for. OK, so you want to be upfront and honest with the employer about the, di the difficulty of the situation, but make sure to make light of it and always end the conversation with how you handled the situation and what you did to overcome these challenges. Okay, so um, when you're describing a difficult problem to the employer, you want to prove to them that you are capable of handling any problem that may arise in your new role. This is ultimately going to attract the employer to you and help them see you as being capable of handling any obstacle. Okay, and so your story, again, should be very concise, but you want to let them know about a time that you were put in a tough situation. And when you analyzed and discussed the problem, more so with a team, you know, and then you came to a conclusion and you came out on top. That is exactly what the employer is looking for, and that is what I highly recommend you do when it comes to explaining a difficult problem you were faced with. Um, again, like I said, you'll want to talk about people that you worked with and what was expected of them, what was expected of you. Okay, so your best selling point really in answering this question is a success story. That's what I would use as the backbone to this question is what is the success story that I have that I can relate to this position? Again, you want to tie everything into this position that you're applying for, okay? And then show them that you were able to excel at that job regardless of the situations and then carry it over and let them know that you're going to be able to excel at this new job no matter what happens as well. So ultimately, that's what they're looking for. Slow down for a second. I know I talk really fast, guys, so I apologize. <laughs> That's just in my nature. Okay, so question number four, what are your greatest strengths? So I know, again, we've all been asked this question in an interview. I'm going to walk you through how to answer this one as well. So they're asking you this question more of in a, in a broad sense, okay? So um, you want to ask yourself, ultimately, what are you best at doing? What are you best at doing? And you, again, really want to relate this to your the job that you're applying for. <clears throat> so don't tell them that you're good at baseball <clears throat> or that you're good at changing diapers. You know what I'm saying? So keep it primarily related to the jobs that you've held in the past or the one that you're applying for. Okay, so here are some things that you can ask yourself. You know, are you a good leader? Are you skilled um, at time management? Are you a great communicator? Are you a detailed planner? Are you good at convincing others? Are you good at selling things? Um, are you good at managing teams? You know what I'm saying? So kind of ask yourself these questions ahead of time to figure out where your areas of strength lie. Go back to times in your previous jobs that you've held and recognize or write down times that you showed exceptional strength and exceptional leadership abilities, you know, where your strengths and your high points really shine bright. Go back to those times and write them down if you have to, or ask yourself questions about if you're a good leader, if you're good with time management, you know, like that. Um, one thing that would also help you is if you research the job description ahead of time to really find out what they're looking for. That way you can leverage your strengths that you um, have come up with to the job description itself. Employers are going to love this. And also, if something, if leadership is something they're talking about for your experience or, you know, managing projects, 
Um, you want to talk about times that you led projects, times that you were a leader. So be sure to tie in what they're looking for, listen closely to what they're looking for, and research the job that you're applying for as well. And so when you tie that in with, you know, you're aligning your strengths with the requirements, you should have no problems talking about your strengths and also presenting solutions um, to their problems because of the strengths that you can present. Okay, question number five is, why do you want to work here? Why do you want to work here? And I think that one of the first answers that comes to our mind is um, because it's a great job, because I have the experience, because it pays well, because it's close to where I live. We want to avoid answering with those statements and hear why. <clears throat> so you need to let the employer know that you are genuinely and sincerely interested in this job. And ultimately, you want them to, to know that you are in this for the long run. Employers are um, kind of, um, they're attracted to an employee, more attracted to an employee who wants to be with the company for longer term. And this is because they see a genuine interest in you wanting to contribute to and help expand and optimize and grow their company through the position that you're going to, to hold now, as well as the positions you're going to promote to in the future. And so this question really helps employers to weed out desperate job seekers who are just looking for a job or just looking for a source of income rather than a lifelong career. <clears throat> so when you're answering the question, why do you want to work here? <clears throat> you want to tell them what you like about their business, whether it's their products, their reputation, their services, their company culture, we want to detail about what you love about their business. And again, this is going to require you to do some research before the interview, not just on the job description itself, but on the company. Research the company culture, find out what they're all about, find out what they believe in, and go from there. And, you know, whatever it is, you'll really want to just express your genuine interest in the employer, in the position, and, and contributing extreme value to that company. Okay, so... Um, this is also a great time for you to compliment them on their products and their reputation. You know, um, again, this comes back to researching the company. Whatever you find out about the company, about their successes, about their accomplishments, their achievements, you know what I'm saying? Like you want to compliment them and bring this up to the employer. It's going to help them raise an eyebrow and say, you know, did you know that? Or, you know, it's really going to impress the employer and let them know that you've done your research ahead of time. And so also one thing is to dig deep to find out what it is that attracts you to them. Okay, so you might have to do a little bit of, bit of soul searching, a little bit of um, kind of brainstorming beforehand to figure out what is it that attracts you to the company. Okay, if it's just the salary, you know what I'm saying, or maybe a, a few small details. You want to sit down and actually figure out what is it that makes me want to work for the company long term. Okay, is it a, a healthy work? balance? Is there more flexibility to this job? Um, can I see myself being a part of this team long term? You know what I'm saying? So have I been purchasing from this, this company for X amount of years? And so therefore I have loyalty, brand loyalty, and I feel more connected to the company. Okay. So um, that is how you should answer. Why do you want to work here? All right. So those are the top five you questions and answers that you are more than likely going to come across or have come across in the past as well as indefinitely in the future. All right, guys, so now I am going to give you the top companies that are hiring right now. And it, this was found on CNN.com, so very reputable source. And it makes sense with everything that's going on right now. So here are some of the top companies that are hiring right now if you guys are struggling to find work. CVS. CVS is hiring. Walmart. Instacart. Albertsons, Dollar General, really any food delivery or delivery company in general, whether that's like Pizza Hut or Papa John's, grocery delivery, Indicart, those are going to be the most profitable and most um, companies that are most likely to hire right now. So if you guys are looking for a job, I highly recommend at least applying to those companies first, whether it's for side income or to supplement, you know, a job that you've temporarily been um, laid off from. So whatever your situation is, um, those are going to be great 
everyone apply for. Another one is also GE Healthcare. Um, this company helps to build medical ventilators. So if you're a healthcare expert of some sort or even in healthcare sales, this wouldn't be a great one for you. What I can do is I will go ahead and add this list of jobs that are hiring to the um, comments down below um, after this video. I will also add the interview questions and answers to this video at the end as well. That way you guys can copy and paste or at least have these on hand. Okay, so um, one last thing is that if you are having a hard time finding a job, if you're having a hard time getting interviews for calls for interviews, chances are it's it comes down to your resume not being qualified. Your resume is your number one selling point. Think of a job interview as a transaction. You are the seller, the employer is the buyer. So ultimately, especially when you're interviewing online, such as in times right now, or even in person, your interview is the first chance that you have to make an impression. It's your marketing material. So you need to not only be show that you're qualified for the job, but also stand out. Otherwise, you're going to be like a fish in the ocean, especially right now when everyone is applying to jobs. You need to show the employer that you are more qualified than the thousands of other applicants next to you. Not only that, but your resume will be run through an ATS applicant tracking system in order to see if it's qualified before even going to the employer. So how do you pass the ATS? It comes down to primarily the keywords that are used on your resume, as well as the requirements and qualifications that you have listed. So your resume needs to qualify. It needs to have proper keywords and terminology in order to pass the ATS scanner and ultimately be seen by the employer. If for whatever reason you have received your resume and you're not getting any calls, I would like you to send your resume to me and I will perform a free resume review for you. Um, what this will do is allow you to see if your resume qualifies for the job you're interested in. And then also I will give you my valuable back so that you can go through and tweak your resume according to the job that you're interested in. So I would be more than happy to review your resume and give you my feedback. What I'm going to do is include my email here in the comments down below after this video so that you guys can email me your resume along with one to three job descriptions or job titles of the positions you're interested in. Okay, so resume and one to three job titles or job descriptions, okay? Email those to me. I'll get back to you within 24 hours with my um, feedback. And then if you guys have any other questions, please, please, please leave a comment down below. And I would love to connect with you. I'd love to answer your questions. We'll be doing another live video in the next couple of days. Um, so stay tuned for more information on that. And again, I really appreciate you guys taking your um, Saturday morning to tune in. And um, I hope that these tips have been helpful for you guys. I have absolute confidence in you that if you prepare accordingly for your next job interview using these questions and answers that you should have no problems impressing the employer and ultimately getting hired all right guys so go out there and give it your best and let me know if you have any questions